I'm Mother Stacy, and it's my privilege to welcome everyone here. Uh, this morning we are at Mystic Waters and Limestone Resort for our annual parish picnic, so it is a joy for us to be together and to welcome folks who are joining us virtually as well. We are so glad that you are able to worship with us this morning and uh, wish that you could be with us in person to eat some of this wonderful food that we're going to have after the service, but no matter we're together in spirit. Of course, it's always my privilege to welcome folks on behalf of the congregation of the Church of the Ascension in Bradford, on behalf of our diocese, the Diocese of Northwestern Pennsylvania, of which we are one of many mission outposts throughout this region, but most importantly on behalf of Jesus Christ, because we gather together in his name to celebrate all the incredible things that he's doing in our midst and in our world and with us and in us and through us. Whether we've worshiped together for the first time or, or this is our first time worshiping together or a hundred and first time, we all need to be reminded that wherever we are gathered, it is our Father's house. And each and every one of us belongs here and has a place here and is missed when we're not here. Our service this morning is a service of Holy Eucharist. Uh, it is taken from the Episcopal Book of Common Prayer. We produce bulletins for these services and we send them out to folks so they can worship with us at home more fully. If you would like one, you can contact the church office and receive that. Uh, we also have bulletins here for the congregation present. So I invite everyone now at this time to stand together with me and get your green uh, music book, the book Wonder, Love, and Praise. And we're going to sing song number 805. That's 805 in the green music book. I want Jesus to walk with me. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord of all power and might, 
the author and giver of all good things. Graft in our hearts the love of your name. Increase in us true religion. Nourish us with all goodness and bring forth in us the fruit of good works. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of Scripture. Song number 771, that's 771, O God of Gentle Strength.
the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Now, when the Pharisees and some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus, they noticed that some of his disciples were eating with defiled hands, that is, without washing them. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they thoroughly wash their hands, thus observing the tradition of the elders. And they do not eat anything from the market unless they wash it. And there are also many other traditions that they observe, the washing of cups, pots, and bronze kettles. So the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, Why do your disciples not live according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? He said to them, Isaiah prophesied rightly about you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching human precepts as doctrines. You abandon the commandments of God and hold to human traditions. Then he called the crowd again and said to them, Listen to me, all of you, and understand. There is nothing outside a person that by going in can defile. But the things that come out are what defile. For it is from within, from the human heart, that evil intentions come. Fornication, theft, murder, adultery, avarice, wickedness, deceit, licentiousness, envy, slander, pride, folly. All these evil things come from within, and they defile a person. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord. Lord Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. It is good to be back with everyone. I know that uh, last week we had a couple of guest leaders for worship, and they did a wonderful job. I have reports, and I can watch the video, too. So um, it is good, though, to be back worshiping together not in our home church, but here in this beautiful setting. Our readings today challenge us too, don't they? Seems like every week the readings have a challenge for us. This week the prayer, the colic, the opening prayer that we do is particularly appropriate, I think, asking that God do several things for us, that he instill in us, he grafts into us, makes part of our hearts, the love of his name, the love of God's self, that he bring, increase in us, true religion, nourish us with all goodness, and bring forth in us the fruits of good work, all through Jesus Christ. Graft into our hearts love. Make it so integral it can't be separated again in our hearts love. Increase in us true religion. And it's interesting, I've been having a lot of conversations lately and I guess a lot of pondering about religion and what that means. You know, it's very popular lately for folks to say that they're not religious or they don't believe in organized religion. And that's actually been popular probably for 30 years. I'm behind the times on this one. It's been going on for a while. And I have long joked that if you don't like organized religion, come to the Episcopal Church. We're not organized at all. <laughs> but anyway, the whole notion of being religious has almost gotten a bad rap, hasn't it? People think that to be religious is almost synonymous with being prejudiced or judgmental or uptight, right? You hear that kind of inflection, particularly in our modern culture, that to be religious is somehow not a good thing. And usually if you hear religious, you hear things like fundamentalists behind it, talking about terrorists of different stripes and faiths. But that's not what Scripture says, and that's not what we pray for. We pray this morning for an increase of true religion, an increase in ourselves of true religion. And then we have James, right? 
James tells us what true religion is. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God is this, to care for orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself unstained by the world. Huh. So religion that is pure before God is to care for those who have the least claim on care, for those who are powerless, widows and orphans. That was certainly the true, the true outcast, the time of the Bible's writing, the time James was being written. Those who have no power, who can't do anything to you if you don't help them and can't give you any reward if you do. But to care for the widows and the orphans, the powerless, the least, and to keep oneself unstained by the world. That was clearly understood not just to be super pure, but to keep oneself from turning to the world instead of God, looking for purpose, for meaning, for fulfillment somewhere besides in God. And so it seems that our friend, the author of James, was really quite following the way of Jesus in this, right? Jesus said the greatest commandments are this, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. Keeping your heart, soul, and mind focused on God, unstained by the world. And love your neighbor as yourself. Love and care for all your neighbors, including the least of your neighbors, the widowed, the orphan, the destitute, the desperate. And this, this is true religion, undefiled, pure before God. This is the religion that we ask in our prayer for God to increase in us. And we know that that is a religion, a way of being religious that is desperately needed. It needs to be named and claimed as it is. We need to hold up a model for being a people of faith that is radically different from the one that is too often being held up as religion. Think about it. Folks say they're not religious because they have never encountered religion in the way Jesus talks about it, in the way Jesus lived it, in the way Scripture calls us to, in the way we pray to have. They haven't encountered religion that first and foremost seeks to care for the other, that first and foremost seeks to keep oneself in order instead of telling everyone else how they need to straighten up. Oopsie. People get way less religious when they have to talk to themselves about what they ought to be doing than when they want to tell someone else what they ought to be doing. So today, in this kind of untypical place for us to worship, we are called to embrace, to ask God's gift of, and then embrace when it comes, true religion. Being religious. Defining that, redefining it for ourselves and for the world as a way of loving. Loving other and loving God. And a way of correcting ourselves when we fail that loving. And today is a wonderful day for that. We need an increase of true religion. As the helpless are being evacuated from Afghanistan, as the frightened stand in the path of a hurricane, as the nation of Haiti recovers yet again from a terrible earthquake, as far as fires still burn, we need religion. We need religion that cares for the widow and the orphan and doesn't just care in thoughts and prayers, but in action.
people who are doers of the word as we're called to be, not just speakers, people who do things to alleviate distress and suffering. Yes, pray, pray mightily, and then act accordingly. We need religion. We need to get religion for ourselves, and we need to live religion in the world. We need to be part of the solution that brings about the kingdom of God. Not just worried about the outside of things, how clean they are. Not worrying about what everyone else is doing and trying to keep ourselves pure. But looking at letting our hearts be truly transformed by the love of God. So what comes out of us is blessing, not curse. Blessing for everyone. Those out of sight, those less than in some minds. Let us pray for an increase of religion in ourselves, hearts cracked open to love God and one another, and an increase in doing the word of God so that we can proudly say, why, yes, we are religious. We're followers of Christ. Amen. Now let us stand together and proclaim our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. <laughs> we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come.
Now let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. Please be seated. I do have a few announcements this morning. Um, a reminder that we have, are resuming a couple of uh, groups and meetings that we have not been able to have for the past several months. So this Wednesday at 12 noon, the ladies of the church are invited to gather at the... Uh, oh, it's raining are invited to gather at the Bradford Club. That's this Wednesday, September 1st at 12 noon. All ladies of the church are invited to gather for our Episcopal Church Women's Meeting. That's at noon at the Bradford Club on Wednesday. Of course, on Wednesday evening at 6, uh, sorry, at 7 p.m., we have our regular AA meeting. That's 7 p.m. on Wednesday night. On Thursday, we have, are doing our free lunch distribution still from 11 to 12.30. Folks are invited to come by and get a lunch to go. We're averaging about 50 folks a week receiving lunch from us, and we're happy to be able to take part in that ministry. Uh, Harry, Jane, and Jerry have been coordinating that in uh, Deacon Gale's sabbatical time. So what's up this week, Harry, Jane? Addie's cooking, and we don't know what. <laughs> she don't know either. But so we will have something good this, this Thursday. <laughs> Stacy says maybe leftover hot dogs. So from 11 to 12.30, you can pick up lunch at the church. Uh, and I invite and encourage folks, if you would like to stay, at 1 o'clock we are resuming our Thursday book study. The first book we're using, it's a series of little booklets that are about five, six weeks each. They're very brief, based on the writings of Henry Nouwen, someone that many of us are familiar with. This first one is called uh, Identity, Finding Myself in God. And again, we'll do a five-week and then take a little break and then do five weeks. So we begin this Thursday, 1 p.m. at the church. You can come, pick up your little uh, pamphlet, pamphlet or booklet there, or if you want to get it early, you can stop by the church office. We have them available. So we're resuming our book group. That's Thursday at 1 p.m. Uh, finally, a reminder that we are still enrolling. We still have some spots for our Ascension Preschool. If you have a little person three to four years old, please consider having them join our wonderful program. Classes begin for that on September 7th, so you need to get in touch with us quickly uh, if you are able to, so we can go ahead and get stuff settled and prepared. If you uh, would like information about the preschool, you can check out our website, you can call the church office, or shoot us an email. I think that's all of our announcements. Again, as uh, has been our practice lately, folks are invited. Those who are present, if you'd like to make a donation you can place it in the basket uh, on your way out. And as I prepare the table for our communion, I invite you to sing song number 757. That's 757 in the green books. There's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place. 752. I need glasses. 752 in the green book. And now let us remember to walk in love as Christ has loved us and gave himself an offering for us all.
strength as you are able. Our service of Holy Eucharist, Eucharistic Prayer B, can be found on page 367 in the Book of Common Prayer, or also complete in your service leaflets. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For by water and the Holy Spirit, you have made us a new people in Jesus Christ our Lord to show forth your glory in the world. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation and the calling of Israel to be your people and your words spoken through the prophets and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O oh Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us that heavenly country where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah! Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
First concludes now with our post-communion prayer, found on page 365 in the Book of Common Prayer, or at our service leaflet. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with the spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We are so very blessed and thankful that everyone who is here in person and those who have joined us online, for our friends who are worshiping with us remotely, we hope that you have been blessed by this time together. And I want to remind you, as I do every week, to say your prayers, wash your hands, wear your mask. If you are able and have not done so, please get vaccinated. And remember that you are so very precious and loved. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, of his Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Our final hymn this morning is hymn number... Hymn number 778, that's uh, 778 in the green uh, songbook, We Are All One in Mission. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. <laughs>